Hey, give me my theme music. Hey, what's up, everyone? How you doing? Um, and thank you for joining us on this live session with Dobie Talk, the learning podcast. Um, again, we have a special pleasure of having Gerald Antoine on from European Doberman Stud. And we have a guest on, which is Keenan from Dobie's Lounge. Welcome, guys. What's going, what's going on? on? What's going on, man? Nothing much. Nothing much. Glad to be here. Really glad yeah, to be here. Yeah, thank you. Glad to uh, live to, live to see another day, <laughs> breathe, wake up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, you know, our topic today is um, nutrition and exercise. So hopefully we can uh, spread some education on some Dobie owners and to let them know what you know we what we personally use for uh, for what we feed our dogs, um, what type of exercise we have, you know, that we instill in our dogs and yeah. possibly any supplements that we use as well so i'll let you start it off gerald and uh why don't we talk about what you feed your dogs because i know you do a lot of raw correct yeah why you gotta pop why you gotta pop my cherry first <laughs> <laughs> hey man you're the dog father my brother you gotta educate us <laughs> well, well here, here's the thing um so d dogs are carnivores you know, and they get most of the nutrition from raw meat. Right? Sure. So I start my dogs off raw at a younger age where I'm mixing raw ground beef into kibble. Yep. Because for some reason, they love raw hamburger meat. Yes, sir. Turkey also. Yeah. Right. And, I start with goat milk. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so... For me, I acclimate them to that until their adult teeth come in. Because puppies still have that mentality like feast or famine. Whereas like, if you gave them a piece of chicken without their grown teeth in, they try to swallow that whole chicken without really, you know, devouring it properly. Yeah. And now you got a problem. So. I mix it in with the raw kibbles and ground beef, get them acclimated. But once those baby teeth falls out, I do raw ground beef and I do raw chicken, like hind quarters, bones and all. But I do it frozen. Solid, sub-zero frozen for wow. a few reasons. The chewing of the meat is working their jaw muscles for bite work, right? Mm -hmm. It also flosses their teeth, right? But more importantly, it keeps them busy all night long. Sure, sure. Next morning, it is gone. So when I have the opportunity, I'm always feeding my, my younger dogs raw twice a day. And after 12 months, I do once a day, right? And I do raw chicken. I go to a place called El Supro. Get that shit for like 50 cents, 60 cents a pound. Mm -hmm. And I got a freezer out in my garage. Boom. But you got to watch it now because if your dogs are not active, that chicken will make them gain weight quick. Yeah, yeah. And, now, and, let me and ask you this. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Gerald, real quick, because I know some of our viewers do a lot of raw. And I always suggest, um, you know, if you're going to do raw, you got to do worm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I deem worm my dogs regardless every three or four months. Sure, sure. And when it comes to raw, there is another company that I used to buy from a lot. <clears throat> and people can Google them. It's called greentripe.com. Uh, and they get these tubes of, of tripe. They have sh sh uh, shaved hooves, cow tongues, t uh, uh, cow's intestines beef, everything grounded up into a tube. Uh -huh. but the problem with tripe is that it smells like shit. <laughs> so you get your freezer smelling like tripe. Yeah. So I went away from tripe and I just stuck to chicken and ground beef. I don't do, I don't do pork. 
only because I've, I've heard of so many stories of pork developed worms easier in dogs. It's just not. And what the what pigs eat is like they eat anything. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, they're like catfish. They're bottom feeders. <laughs> right. I love catfish, too, now. Tell me about it. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I feed my dogs. You know, especially when the grown teeth are in, I, I do raw, frozen, hard, nice. soft, brick chicken. Okay, nice. Yeah, we, we actually introduced our, our dogs to raw as well. But as you know, sending them to board and train, our trainers are not going to feed them that. Right. So we started introducing a, a good protein diet with some kibble, right? And as you know, as well, trainers work the shit out of these dogs. So they're losing a lot of weight, right? The they got to keep that weight on. They come so, back lighter than they were. <laughs> so we, we pretty much, you know, uh, give them a nook shook, right? It's recommended yeah. because the reason why is it's more calories per cup than a lot of other brand kibble. I, right. that's the bag that i just told keenan about today because mm -hmm. with alonzo i mean not alonzo but with casanova he's about 95 pounds i'm like he's getting fucking big so we had to shell back like versus al feeding them four cups we're giving them two big cups now because yeah that that, that dog food adds weight quick yeah it does it does and so you got to just be careful because there's different there's different styles. There's, a you know, three different bags. One I for do 32, 32. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 32. And then we do uh, 30, 25, I believe it is. So I'll show it. I'll, I'll bring it up um, as we're talking. But um, now let me let me pick your brain, Keenan. What do you what do you introduce your dogs to? Well, actually, as puppies, because, you know, because I have litters, too. So about six to eight weeks is when I start mixing the goat milk with the ground beef and mixing it together to get them going. Mm -hmm. Once I start deworming them, um, as far as dog food is concerned, I use Pro Victor Plus for the most part. Gotcha. And, I, and for the puppies, I use the Royal Canine Puppies. Also, I, I do raw feeding. I feed them chicken and ground beef for the most part. Um, I have multiple dogs, as you do too. So, you know, I kind of mix it up. I probably raw feed about twice a week. And the other days, I give them a kibble, is what I do. That's awesome. what it, I mean, it's pretty much pretty dry and cut for me when it comes to the feeding them. For and sure. then I use supplements too. It's like I put dine in there sometimes if I need, I see that they need a little weight on them because oh, yeah. every dog is a little different as far as, yep, this is, there you go. I have it at the house too. And then red cell too for the nutrition. Yeah. It's, it's salmon oil also. There you go. So that's oh. what I use. Yeah, we got it on display. So this actually promotes the dog's health. It promotes mm -hmm. good coat. Um, you know, yep. we always promote this little baby right here. Coconut oil. Coconut oil. Yeah, that works real good, too. Organic I get the coconut, coconut oil. oil. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what? That coconut oil works in a lot of ways, even inside the house. Tell me about it, man. The woman was like, oh, oh no, put that it's a done deal, bro. It's quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now the secret, the secret that we have, you guys know about this? The superfood. Sperlina. No, I've never used oh, that spirulina. before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sperlina. Okay. It's it's a, a algae-based um, you know, Hawaiian powder that you add. It we can actually use it. A lot of the females like to put it with coconut oil and put it on their face, their mask. We can put it in their food you know gerald you you drink a lot of shakes and protein shakes yeah, add that to your, add, add that to your shakes man we add it to our shakes we add it to the dog's food it promotes good health and it actually you know again a coat shiny coat healthy coat but the, don't forget to mention that it, it stains your goddamn blender oh my gosh yes it stains your hands it stains everything man so you got to be careful with that <laughs> but yeah. that's what we basically use and we mix it up right so one day we'll do salmon oil you know in the kibble and possibly like some vital or something like that and then the next day we we maybe just go straight kibble and then you know we switch it up every other day we rotate it you know some dime you know, you know if they're a little underweight uh salmon oil um you know things of that nature so yeah so you know there's a lot of things out there that can promote good health but this is just what we use and i think you know keenan you have a good you know base it you know you have pretty much um you know i always say the proof is in the pudding right. you know just look at our dogs you know yep. look at gerald's dogs 
you know, look what we feed our dogs, you know, and then you can just take a little, you know, a note from that and just start adding it into their regimen and hopefully it will work for you. You know, yeah, I just watch it learn. Also, I use glutosamine too. Glutosamine when they're growing to make sure the joints are real good when they're puppies. Nice. It helps, helps with the heart of the cartilage of the ears too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, tell us that, that little secret, Gerald. So when, when puppies are growing and they're teething, you know, around eight weeks old, you turned me on to uh to some calcium phosphorus with some seaweed and man i'm telling you ever since i started using that for posting ears because you know governments as they're growing they only produce so much calcium and as they're teething it goes straight to their teeth right so sometimes as you as you told me and you you know you you turned me on to this and you educated me joe i started adding a little scoop here and there um you know, a after probably 10 weeks, because you don't want to feed them too early because their joints will get too big. Correct. Yeah. So we started doing that. And man, that builds the foundation in the ears. And now it takes less time for you to post your ears. So it really takes about six months when some people are posting their ears up to a year. And, you know, there's a lot of stress involved when you're posting ears. <laughs> and, after, and after a year, if you're still posting after a year. Good luck. Then yeah, good luck. You better get that surgery, which is going to cost you a couple of grand. <laughs> when yeah, put that, yeah. Put that uh, prosthetic stem inside the ear. Sure. And that's still ain't guaranteed. I've had that done before with Bishop when I gave a guy a dog, and he never stayed on top of the ear. So one ear always had an issue. Yeah. And I had that surgery done, and then the stem actually came out at some point. Wow. Wow. So, you know, um, what other types of supplements that you guys use? Uh, do you guys use any um, type of powder or pills that you guys give to your dogs on a regular basis for uh, maybe helping build immune system? Well, I give my dog these, uh, these I'm going to try to find a thing. They're, they're probiotics, these puppies. I give them the probiotics and, the, and, um, and supplemental. And I know, listen, I know that the best source of nutrition it's always going to be in the consumption of the food they get. I know sure. that, right? Yeah. So I know that the 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 chewable um, vitamins they don't do a lot, but they still do more than what you can. They're still doing more than what you. They're doing every little bit they can to add on to what you're already doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. If, so if the Europeans who I got the dog from telling me to use this, and they've been using it for umpteen years. I'm gonna listen to them. Sure. And so I do have a couple of them that I give the puppies. Um, when they're grown, I do strictly exercising, you know, the dog treadmill, the swimming, um, running the shit out of them. Um, but that's what's really gonna get them to be in top shape is the the consumption of like some people who are who are pet owners or breeders, whatever whatever category they want to be in, they they have an open bowl policy where they're just laying food around all fucking day. If you lay snacks around my room all day, I'm going to snack all day, right? <laughs> you're not yep. going to, you're never going to be, you're going to be in a calorie surplus and dogs get fat quick and they lose weight quick. So yeah. I keep my dogs, my grown dogs on a feeding schedule when, when you, I feed them at five o'clock in the afternoon. That means their poop is regular. That means I know what time they're going to be really, really hungry and not play with your food. So I keep them on a schedule. And that within itself and plenty of water and what I do because I'm a, I'm a stud provider, there's this powdered substance that I put in their drinking water. So mm -hmm. when he's drinking, he's still getting the the supplements that, to, to have copious amounts of sperm when it's time yeah. to breathe. Nice. And that hydration, right? Builds that hydration? Yep. Yeah. And you know, like I said, you know, you, you exercise all the time, man, you know, and you eat clean, you know, and, but you still somewhat take some supplements to actually add. Oh, absolutely. You got to, I got fish oil. Yes. CLA. Oh yeah. <laughs> Vitamin E. <laughs> and a, a barrage. Oh, I see them. <laughs> you see them so yeah and again how much are they helping me out i don't know 
but I don't want to find out if I didn't take them. If you didn't take them, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, especially at my age, you know, 51, you know, I have to build my calcium intake because I'm losing that as I grow older, right? So I'm intaking more calcium just to keep my bones nice and strong. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, throughout our eating, you know, whether we're eating clean, you know, um, and making sure that we're eating the right foods, you know, there are, you know, we, we ensure that we're taking some types of supplements to, uh, how, how do I say, balance out that, that diet that we have, right? And then right now, um, Keenan, how many times yeah. are you feeding your adult dogs right now? I feed them for the most part once a day. Once, once a day? A, one big once meal? Once a day for the most part, one good meal. Yeah, I, I I, every morning I go out there, I feed them, I let them run around, I exercise them. Um, and then I feed them once a day and then I let them rest. And I take the food from them like 15, I give them 15 minutes to 20 minutes to eat. They yeah. don't eat, I take it. That way they don't have just food sitting around. And once you start doing that, and then sometimes they'll get stubborn, especially when you start feeding them raw, they don't want to eat the regular dog food. Sometimes. Oh yeah, for so, sure. Yeah, as far as like supplements go, uh, the basic supplements I said before, basically what I use for the older dogs, but for the puppies, like I, I start with the cholesterol boosters. Mm -hmm. I give them on probiotics. I do. I give them. I give my boys stuff for studs. Like I am stud, and then um, and then I give them some stuff, some other things like um for their coats. It's like gain and shine. I don't have it with me. I wish I would have brought everything over here. So for sure, I'll show it to you guys. But there's a, a couple of other things that I use. That, they keep their coats looking good and shiny and keep weight on them. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And then throughout the day, as you're training and things like that, are you feeding them like uh, like high value treats or, you know, treats like that as well? Well, as far as training those, I, I do give them treats, but uh, mostly what I've been doing for the most part is I just reward them with the ball, the mm -hmm. ball, uh, the ball drive. And I just reward them like that way to praise them. So they're, they're more like uh, play driven. Yeah. Ball driven. Ball driven and prey drive. I use that more than uh, yeah. snaps. Yeah, I use a lot of uh, like vital, um, mm -hmm. you know, th that type of little like high value treats when we're actually training because they always mm -hmm. have focus and wanting to actually do things because a lot of times I'm playing the ball all day long or, you know, as you see, I play with water a lot. Yeah. So, exactly. you know, they're very motivated with that water, but I, mm -hmm. you know, that's all they want to do. So I have to take them away from that and try to mm -hmm. do other things, right. you know? But then there, there you go. They're over there by the hose waiting for me to turn on the water again, you know? <laughs> so again, you know, we just got to balance out, have them structured, you know, keep them on a, on a, on a good regimen. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Gerald? Um, in regards to which part, like, um, the, yeah, just feeding once a day. Um, I, do you do I, treats I, throughout I, the day? I, well, <clears throat> I only do treats when it's time to, to train. And I'm not talking about advanced training. I'm just talking about the basic down, stay, yep. sit, kill, bark on command to keep them tuned up. Sure. Right. Um, but I use Build Jack. They seem to love that. Uh huh. And uh, Build Jack is they they got they got a hold on the treats. But Larry Hansen makes her own treats homemade, and, and it's like I think it's liver or chicken roasted or something. And these dogs go nuts over that, man. <laughs> I'm like, give me some. I'm like, I may do some tricks. You give me some tricks yeah, right? yeah. We actually do it too. I'm not sure if there's a, if you guys know about it. I forget the name. Felicia was going to come on and, you know, she's the nutritionist. You know, she knows all about the supplements and things like that. So I kind of wanted to come on because she's always re researching certain things to give the dogs. And there was one thing that we took uh, to our training meetings and everyone loved them. It was like, uh, um, what was it? It was like ground beef, peanut butter, and then it was uh um what is it called? Um damn it. Uh well, you just named cream, oh, cream of wheat. Dog. Like cream of wheat or 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 uh not cream of wheat, but um you know what I mean. I can't think oatmeal? of the word, but uh, oh oatmeal. Yeah, you just named two things I, okay, so that two things out of the three I know dogs mm -hmm. go crazy. Yeah, peanut beef. butter and raw meat. <laughs> and oats is pretty good. That's a good idea because now you're adding in carbs. Yeah. Yeah. So we added that all together. We added a little coconut oil, put a little spirulina in there, you know, and the dogs will go crazy for it. I mean, I'm talking about focus. You know, that's all they want to focus on. <laughs> that's their money, man. Yeah. Treats is their money. But when it comes to feeding, 
Um, I don't feed in the morning time. I feed in the afternoon. Like I make sure they eat before I eat. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we do 4 p.m. every day. Yeah, yeah, it's 5 p.m. for me because then now they, they get to wind down. They burn the they burn everything they ate the night before. They burnt it off running around, and it's just keeping like clockwork. That's just for me. It works that way. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, everybody's different. Ken does it in the morning. I do it in the afternoon. Whatever works, works for you. Sure. Um, but right now, like like you said before, when these when these dogs go to trainers. They come back looking like Skeletor, man. And they're like, oh, man, I've been feeding them six cups, seven cups a day. Well, I get that, but these dogs are a little bit stressed out. They're not at home. And the trainers are not trying to be their friend, mm -hmm. which I'm okay with that. But my dogs are able to convert from raw food to kibble like that. And that's what you want because the only dog that would starve themselves are dogs that are sick. Right, they'll eat anything to have some something in their stomach. Sure. Right. So for me, it's like I make sure my dogs have been well versed in being able to have kibble if they have to go off for a couple of weeks or a week or the weekend. Yeah. And they won't be tripping on well, he hasn't ate for two days. Well, because you're leaving the food there, like Keenan. If my boy don't eat the new kibble that I give him in fifteen minutes, Pick I'm doing it that and I'm picking it up. Yeah. So now the next day, we'll put it down the same time. You want to act the food? You don't want it? You pick it? All right, pick it up again. At some point, it's going to click like, yo, if I don't eat this food, I'm not <laughs> eating. <laughs> I'm going to eat that food. Simple. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, going back to supplements, let me show you what we pretty much use uh, with New Vet Labs. Uh, this is all um, immune system builder. We got mm -hmm. hip and joint support, shampoo, you know, uh, spray. I mean, there's all types of different supplements. And, you know, if someone wants to get into New Vet Labs, I am going to post uh, in our comments right here. The promo code. The promo code. So, there again, promo code, 15% off, auto ship. And this stuff is amazing, you know, especially with puppies building the immune system and even older dogs. So if you're doing um, any like uh, hip and joint, you know, in older dogs, this is a good supplement. Um, we also do Breeder's Edge. So Breeder's Edge is uh, also really good. So you can check out that. But, you know, again, you know, there's different supplements out there that really help your dogs out there. And, uh, you know, we stand by them. Breeders Edge is what I use for the most part. Yep. 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 Breeders Edge prenatal, is awesome. prenatal and all and everything else. Yep. Put a Oxy stud Spud, in my Oxymate. And Oxymate, prenatal vitamins, all Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you use for your for your studs, uh, Gerald? Do you add any uh you know supplements for them before they uh they, yeah, they yeah, do I, their work? <laughs> I usually use this thing called Oxy Stud. Yeah, Oxy yeah, we use that. Oxymate. Breeders and Edge. I used to get it from um, Animal Revival or Revival Animal. I don't remember which one it is, but I used to buy all their my stuff from there. And then I started seeing like, oh shit, Amazon's a little cheap. Yeah, and it's faster, and, and, and I can track it better. So I, <laughs> I, but they also have some powdery sustenance that I use that I put in his water. That way he's he's drinking it all the time. So yeah, I, yeah. I do give him um, breeding supplements. Yeah. And you're saying that that builds up the sperm count, correct? Man, he's a I did an extraction at Warner Pet Clinic about three days ago. Yeah. And it was that 400, right? 400 million. Yep. Yep. 400 million. Yeah. That was with the uh, All True Dobermans. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. He has one of our dogs over there, but he bred Axel to, uh, or uh, what's her name? I think it's, uh, oh, I forget. Uh, Whoa. With, well, no, but I'm talking about his female. I don't remember, but yeah. So he was he was referred to me by you. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, I yeah. told you because he was he was about to breed with uh, I think uh, Enzo. Enzo, right? Yeah, and something didn't look right. So I told him, man, man, you better hurry up. You better get with Gerald. <laughs> and he shot me. over to you, and you Thank had you to get on the shelf already, bro. <laughs> I was like, yo, I said, Bo is free. And Trans that's the difference. That's the difference between the two dogs I got. Bo. Uh, Bo doesn't mind being extracted with or without a teaser. Casanova needs a teaser. Yeah, yeah. 
a female know. dog, as you're saying, right? A teaser, someone yes. you know, a female that's in heat. A that's in dog that's in heat. Yeah, mm -hmm. and maybe maybe casting up on mature with that, but it's 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 kind of difficult sometimes because he gives you a sample, but the sample is not enough to ship. Gotcha. But you have to be a teaser there. In porn world, it's called a buffer. Mm. <laughs> that, yeah. it, it will be a lot easier. But sure, Bo, sure. you can put a scarecrow in front of him. He's he's done. He's ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's Watch how Lorenzo is. Watch your leg, you can, buddy. You can, put a, you, can put a, you can put a Jeepers Creepers. <laughs> that is so funny. That's how Lorenzo is. He he'll run into the clinic. No teaser. Just ready to go. <laughs> that is funny. So hey, so okay, so we talked a, a little about what we feed our dogs. Now let's talk about what uh, what type of different exercises that we uh, we promote um, or recommend to our viewers to actually you know um, get some drive out of these dogs. Go ahead, Joe. Well, well, I learned something from Steve-O, the trainer Steve-O. Um, he told me something about 10, 10 years ago. He said some the best exercise for a dog is when you stake them out on a fence and you you do rag work. Mm -hmm. and you make him bark all the time. Bark, bark. He said what the dog is doing, his chest is expanding every time. Every time. He's oh, yeah. And he said that's one of the best exercise for a protection dog. It, and, and that, that barking, that excessive barking, expanding and, and contracting and expanding of the, of, the, of the chest, digging into the grass, those are good exercises. Unfortunately, I don't do that as often as I used to. Mm -hmm. um, because it depending on where you are, you will spook people. Sure. You know, um, but the best for me right now, because listen, it's no secret when you walk in your Doberman down the street and somebody's walking towards you as a courtesy, what I do, I just go on the other side of the street, right? Because when they walk towards you, they go on the other side. So I'm making easier. So let me do it. I'm courteous. Because sure. Doberman, Out of respect. Yeah, because. Some people they split like the Red Sea when they see the door. Oh my God, the door! <laughs> I said, I said these dogs are not the one that's breaking into your house, raping your family members, killing people, you know, committing theft. Sure. You you should have to worry about this. You need to worry about those dudes out in the street. Yeah. This right here protects you from that out there. In from the street. that, yeah, from that element. Right. So for me, the best form of exercise because there's so many people out and about, and I don't do I don't do dog parks because you got a bunch of it's like it's crazy like a, animals. Yeah, crazy animals. They lose all their training. Then you got half the animals and got no training, and two and, and three fourths of them got part pit of them, and it's like I'm not dealing with that, right? Because yeah. you heard of the incident with Zypher who got shot, shot in Arizona. In Arizona at a dog yep. park. So for me, the best the best way I'm controlling the exercise movement is the um, I got the dog treadmill now. It's a, a controlled environment. It is it's soft and paws because I have the wooden slats. Yeah. Um, and it's all prey drive driven, and they they can do two three miles in about eight five eight minutes eight to yep, ten minutes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You know, full um, speed. Yeah. And if I had a pool, like a friend of mine, Laddie has a pool. Swimming is great for dogs too, because it's it's less um, bouncing on their joints, sure. legs, hips. But I don't have a pool. Yeah. So yeah, we we went through probably like three, four different types of pools, you know. But sometimes when they're when they're jumping in the pool, they sometimes scratch the bottom and they tear it. So I'm have have to patch it. Mm -hmm. So we ended up getting a 22 foot by 14 foot pool that's six feet high. But it took up our whole backyard. I couldn't even move, you know, because they're dock divers, as you know, Gerald. Yeah. So they love doing that, but it just took too much space, right? So we minimized it. We got a smaller, smaller little uh, uh, pool that they love to go in. And then I just put like a, a tarp with some rocks down at the bottom. And, or I got one of those, uh, those horse mats that you get. 
you know, for weight rooms and things like that. And we put it at the bottom. So when they jump in, no problem. They love it. You know, the only thing is, is those smaller pools don't have no fil filtration system. So you got to be cleaning that thing all the time. Because again, you know, when we go to our pool guy, they always say, hey, make sure you clean it because dogs have a lot more oil in their skin. So like you said, you know, swimming is great for them. Now, now, Keenan, what, what do you do to, to exercise them? Uh, do you guys use a treadmill as well or, or a slap mill? No, I don't have a slap mill. I actually take them running myself in the mornings is what I do. And I interchange them. Nice. Start with. And then I have some room. I have room in my backyard. So they, I let them out. They run. They play with each other, tire their self out also. Yep. Um, I take them to do um, protection training. That's one good thing that having multiple dogs, they, they play off each other. <laughs> yeah, they play with each other. Yeah. I just got to be careful. I just let a couple out at a time. That way they don't, you have, you know, because they'll fight each other. Especially you know? males. Yeah, especially you know, my females will too. Yeah, so, oh yeah. <laughs> my females are pretty good. You know, I can put them all out, three, four females at the time, and they're good. You know, but my male boys, always getting aggressive, man. Who wants the, wants the water first? Who wants the play toy first? You know, who wants the ball first? Who Does wants your dogs? You first? My females are like that. My females <laughs> do that. Oh yeah. I have one nice. female. She's real dominant roles, and she'll she'll fight for everything, food, everything. You gotta. Yeah. When you throw oh. the ball, does you, does one dog always nip at your other dog's side? Yeah, Rose. She, yeah. She'll, she'll fight any dog that, that's out there if you let yeah, her. Yeah, because one dog will let her know the that ball. You're one dog will go chase the ball, and the other dog mm -hmm. will chase. But when they're running back, they're nipping at the side, right? So then sometimes I have to separate them and only play with one dog at a time. So well, yeah, slap meals, slap meals are great, man. You know, if uh, you know, especially with hot weather, concrete's hot. You know, you can't walk your dog, can't run your dog. You know, so slap meals are good. And we'll just give a plug real quick. It's a uh, Cali Mills eight one eight, who <laughs> who who got our slap meals from. Uh, I seen Gerald, right? I seen Gerald have his, and I was like, man, I gotta get me one of those. <laughs> so yeah, they're 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 good. Um, if you can afford it, because they're a little pricey. But, um, but yeah, they're really good, you know, just in case that you don't, you know, have the time or, you know, you have the yard or things like that, you can take them out. Um, so that's another good thing. Any other thing that you do, Ke uh, Keenan? Um, pretty much. It's pretty basic for me right now because I have so many of them. I had to make sure I interchange them and keep them running. I, I just exercise with them. I let them out every day. Let them mm -hmm. run around, tire yourself out, take them to go training. And I just yeah. walk them. And, you know, they just, they're, they're pretty much tired yourself out for the most part a lot, too. Nice. nice. Yeah. Are, are they pretty much structured? Because my dogs are structured, man. Oh yeah. You know, Five a.m. They do this, you know. Seven a.m. They're they're break. You know, nine a.m. I have to switch certain dogs out and bring the other dogs in. It just goes back and forth, and then you know, there's feeding time. You know, so again, at what our I feeding time. I'm, yeah, I let them out in the morning. Is what I do, and I let them uh -huh. run around. I, I, every morning, I'll take one. I change them and go running with them. And then when yeah. I come back, I let I clean everything out. Then I feed them. Let them rest. Nice. And after that, I bring them out later because it gets real hot where I'm at. So, you know, I nice. have to in the shade. Who's that, Jill? Then I'm back out in the evening. boy right there. <laughs> hey, you know, you know, you is know. That what the next, is that the next, uh, is he going to, is he going to take it, take uh, the next, uh, how do I say, the throne? <laughs> I think he's going to be more of a swimmer. He loves swimming. Nice. <laughs> hey, but no, but um, what I used to do as a, uh, as a good, a good, very good exercise, and I had to think about it. But this is when I can have Rome and complete control over the uh, the parks. Uh -huh. I, will, I will put Alonzo and Brody, and even Sigmund. I will put them on the parachute. If you ever seen videos of that. Mm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah! It builds up the endurance, right? So right. You're, you're pulling against the the uh, resistance. That's right. And they love the he love the parachutes. The thing is, they have to be obedience trained because they have to be in a down position, and you have to walk at least half a football field, and then you call them. And you got to uh -huh. make sure they stay in a down position because. If they move around, the wind will probably go with the with the parachute, and now they're gonna tear the parachute up. That's why yeah, I got the yeah. eight dollar parachute. <laughs> but that parachute, they digging in, man. And listen, three or four of those, they're done. Yeah, 
Oh, for sure. For sure. You know, we do something similar. And it's funny that you said that because we have a, a sled that carries weights. So I'm not sure, oh. you know, back in the day, we seen dudes pull a sled with 400 pounds on it with a bungee cord. And I was like, man, and then I was like, man, you're pulling 400 pounds. Let me, let me jump on this damn thing and see if I, you can pull another 225 pounds. <laughs> he started moving me, man. And I was like, man, I don't want to hurt you. I'm I'm getting off. Didn't you, didn't you have, have, um, Deuce, like where he's able to pull you guys in a cart or something? Uh, it was on a bike. We normally put yeah, a bungee yeah. on our mountain bike and he just runs around the street, you know, our neighborhood. And he's, he's so good that I can say left and he'll veer to the left. Wow. I can say right and he'll veer to the right. If we come to an intersection, right? I tell him stop and he'll slow down at a IC and he'll sit and wait and for my next command, right? In the early stages, I would tell him, stop, man. He would stop right in front of the bike because the bungee was so short. <laughs> so I had to extend the bungee, right? But yeah, there's all types of different types of exercises that you can do, you know, to build up uh, that resistance, that endurance, you know, and it's great, you know? So hope our, hope our viewers are learning something right now. Um, and also, if you guys want to follow Gerald on YouTube, right? Uh, his link's right down at the bottom. Um, so go go make sure that you follow his YouTube channel. And if you want to call uh, follow uh, Keenan, go and follow him at Dobie's Lounge on IG. Yes, okay, so just make sure you go follow him. Do you have a YouTube channel? No, I don't have a YouTube ch channel, yes. All right, just make sure you get one, man, because that's the new okay. shit, bro. <laughs> YouTube and TikTok. Pushing, you know? huh? Yeah, right. IG's fading out like Facebook's fading out. You know, it's it the, new, the new thing is TikTok and and uh, and YouTube, YouTube. Shorts, because <laughs> no one's going viral anymore on uh, on IG. No, you know, it's more TikTok. You know, more people you can make one video and you go viral the next day on TikTok and Shorts as well on YouTube. So, you know, make sure you get it's one of those promote your business. So, anything else that you guys want to talk about with exercise? We got any questions in the in the comment section? I haven't seen any questions come in, um, but if there's any viewers out there that are or that are look um, that are viewing us, let us know what you uh, want to ask us. If you have any questions, um, because we'll be keep on talking, and, and this will be recorded and actually going um, on YouTube and Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch so all those four platforms and actually i put it on spotify as well so you know if you guys have any other questions um going forward just leave them in the comment section and then we'll answer those questions next time around when we're on because we're going to try to do this every couple weeks you know to better educate you know you guys as owners and you know us as breeders you know because we can bounce off each other and learn hey, hey what about the merch you know people been want to buy the shirts <laughs> for me and you lately it's like this is the shirts only are given to people who buy the puppies but tell me about it yeah merch. <laughs> yeah the merch is awesome you know because you're, you're promoting your brand you know yep. you're you're showing you what you're about um what type of dogs that you breed and uh you know hats shirts stickers you know um any branding that you have you know it's always a representation of you so you know that's always good and as a courtesy you know, when we, uh, when we, you know, sell a puppy to a new owner, you know, it's either a shirt or a hat or things like that. You know, I think Gerald, you know, you work with the same graphic, uh, designer that I do, which is, uh, Jennings, uh, uh, right? yeah. DJ Jennings, Jennings yeah. right? Yeah. So he does all our graphics. He's doing another one now. Yeah. He's doing us too for Adobe art. So, you know, for Adobe talk, he's actually doing banners for us and we're doing all that. So you're going to see a whole new design in the back. Keep going, man. <laughs> I don't know. So, I don't know how we found him, but I think we. I think it's it's a infectious where people are really starting to. I see him doing more dog graphics now. Yeah, he does a lot because the reason why I found him because he did all elevated canine with Oscar's graphics. Yeah. And then I reached out to him and I started having all my uh, you know um, logos and things like that um, being you know uh, designed for him, but he's busy. Like you said, he's doing it for a lot of breeders and, you know, uh, trainers. So our openings, I think August 16th <laughs> is when yeah. I want to get a design. 
so but yeah man it's 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 awesome to talk with you guys you know it's awesome to uh to learn from each other and uh you know to bounce off knowledge because that's what this is you know it's a learning podcast and you know and that's why you know i i made a a, a post the other day that you know you don't necessarily have to come on this platform because you're part of nemesis kennels you know you can be on this platform because you're you know part of gerald uh european doberman stud you know uh you know you're part of uh Dobie's lounge with keenan you know anything that you have a unique story and there's something to learn you know and take away to become better breeders or better owners you know this is the platform to do it you know again you know we want to teach you guys to be better owners because the last thing we want to do as breeders is you get a dog you can't handle that dog and you're calling us back and saying hey man you know you need to take this dog back because that's what <laughs> that's in our claws you know you cannot that contract is not transferable you can't be you know putting that dog anywhere else but us you know <laughs> so you know the last thing i want to do and that's why we filter our clients is to make sure that you know they are they know the responsibility it takes the liability that it comes with these dogs you know and the price tag that goes along with all that training and vet visits and everything else right yeah, so you know we ensure we ensure that we uh we want to make sure that you're educated enough that uh you know you learn from us so you know you don't make those type of mistakes because for me and i i believe it's for you guys too it's always the dog first right of course so you know and that's why we have a good network you know because that mindset you know and people understand you know when they search people because you don't even know how many people I, you know clients that call me and say man I, I talk to breeders they never call me back you know when i start talking about this you know they get a little suspect and they don't you know and, and they hang up or, or whatever it is you know when it when it when it's time to, to talk about money um and we know what their motivation is when you come to someone like that so especially for me you know i'm here to help um you know we we give um uh, lifetime puppy support so throughout the years of these dogs if they have any questions concerns you know we're here to help to to help you raise these puppies you know uh better joe do you want to add anything to that yeah i just you know it's not enough of um there's not a, it's not enough of transparent breeders uh, i give an example and then we can we can conclude um i bred to a guy that has one female so i bred him with O, and then i bred him with casanova when she came in heat again uh-huh and a few of the puppies came out with some spots i'm like wait a minute because when he first brought it to me i was like bo is dominant black he, he ain't kicking no he don't even kick out red dogs and i'm like something's wrong so i was like hmm no big deal hmm. and then we bred him to casanova and bred her to casanova and some of the puppies came out with white spots yeah it's like wait a minute two different dogs two different kennels I said, man, you need to talk to that, to that kennel that you got that female from up north. I ain't gonna say no names, mm -hmm. and talk to him and say, does he know about this these white uh, recessive genes that's in the bloodline? Z because, factor genes, correct? Huh? Z well, factor gene. Well, sometimes you can get a recessive spot, but it could be a Z factor issue. Yeah, and I'm mm -hmm. like, wait a minute. And these breeders need to like if you got white spots in your line you know if people are trying to breed for confirmation and show you shouldn't breed that dog sure and he's and he's charging well over 3500. Mm -hmm. and i'm like you know for that i'm looking for like beautiful top line beautiful bottom line sure perfect everything if i'm gonna break off that kind of money because i could import something for almost equivalent yeah yeah for sure yeah. hey so we got a we got a couple questions here uh gerald um this is uh john olson here uh what would be minimum amount of exercise per day uh example 40 minutes and go ahead e either one of you guys can answer that well um I would say it depends on the dog. Like if the dog is used to running a shithole lot, depending on his condition, then 40 minutes, you're not doing it the hundred all the whole 40 minutes. You're gonna like run the dog with the ball, throw the ball 50 yards, bring him back, 
come back, bring them back. You do that for 30, 40 minutes. And if the dog tongue is not hanging outside his mouth on the side, then he ain't, he's not exerting all his energy. So, I mean, it's going to depend on the, the type of um, conditioning the dog has. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it depends. It's like the dog ain't never ran before. You may want to start out with 20, 30 minutes because, you know, dogs don't sweat. It may overheat. Yeah. You got a problem. Sure, sure. And what about you, Keenan? What do you recommend? I say it depends on the dog also and the age of the dog too because I have older females where you don't need much exercise because they're older and they're just um, getting to that age where they don't need as much work. Other ones, I have an hour. Yeah. Are you missing an hour a day? It just depends on the dog, the age, their drive. Because they're all a little different. You just got to assess your dog individually. Sure, sure. Yeah, and, you know, for us, you know, we, we break it down. You know, we do 15, 20 minutes, you know, with, with three or, you know, two or three dogs. And then we bring them in. And then we do 15, 20 minutes with the other dog. And But we do that two or three times a day, right? Mm -hmm. And we interact and, you know, we do different types of things. Like we, we may do like ball, you know, play ball. Maybe we, we, we may do like water. We may get on the slap mill, you know. So it, 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 it's a, just a various type of thing that we, we pretty much do over here. Yeah, it's twice a day for me too. In the mornings and the evenings. In the mornings before it gets too hot and the evenings when it cools down, I take them all out. Nice. Uh, this is Kizzy K. This says, hi, Mark, Gerald. I'm Kim Damu GMA. Well, hello, Kizzy K. Do you have any uh, questions for us? Let us know. GMA. Anyone else? That's, uh... that's my initials. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. GMA? Gerald Marquise Antoine, yeah. Nice. Marquise, huh? Nice. You thought it was Mark? No, no. <laughs> That's nice. So what do you got going on? Uh, anything new, Gerald, that you got going on? I know you did awesome thing today. I think you and Keenan went out today with Elevated Canine and did, took some pictures with some people. There was a lady that's doing these uh, these type of images where it shows a the smoke is uh, the blue is supposed to be the color of the smoke. Yeah. So she did frontal, frontal photos and side photos. So I posted up a video of showing how she's going to still frame of the dogs jumping with the blue smoke coming off the back. Those are still frames. Even though sure. we had to make him jump, she's just going to like, ch -ch 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 -ch. right? Did that today, man. It was, it was pretty dope, man. That's nice. And you did, you did it as well, huh, Keenan? Yeah. We had to do the same exact thing with my boy Lorenzo. I use red. So we, it was pretty good and it was a new experience for me. So I really enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to seeing how. Yeah, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Um, I bet you his battery died. Let's see here. All right, stand by. I'm bringing it over. Stand by. Woo! All right, check this out. Check it out. All right. Oh, where did Keenan go? He dropped I off. Think, I think his laptop died. Oh, okay. Well, he can get back on the link and he can get back in. Um, but check this out, man. I want to add this to our stream here and look at Gerald's dog, Bo. <laughs> so they took photo. They they took uh, still photos. Yes, yes. He has a high res camera. So when he's jumping and running those are the images you're going to see the still frames of it uh-huh everyone thought you were announcing a baby man <laughs> did you see your comments yeah they got <laughs> jokes though yeah that was funny they don't know but yeah that, that was hilarious um but yeah there's a lot of good things that you can do with your dogs you know and get out there and promote your business and your dogs you know uh first thing is always health you know i always say that uh you know nutrition exercise and above all love right yep. you know make sure you bond with your dog make sure you get out there you spend time with your dog um that's where the exercise comes in and you're feeding them the right food because i always say shit in shit out man so that's put true. the right food in your body right and your dog will last your dog will you know and uh you know and and live a longer life than if you're feeding them you know um crap so just make oh, sure that you guys are doing the right thing by your dog I don't feed them that cheap ass pedigree shit. 
No, no, no. <laughs> well, well, anything else, Jared, that you want to talk about? Anything new? You got new shirts? You said you're coming on, right? There's Keenan. I got some new graphics coming. I, you know, I gotta, I gotta make some stuff happen. Nice. You know, I'm, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm gonna wait till it comes out before I make the announcement. Nice. Well, again, guys, you know, Kenyon, did you want to uh, leave leave our viewers with anything? Um, no, not much. I just want to say thank you for um, having me as, as a guest on the show. It's been a very good experience, and I'm looking forward to doing it again. Yeah, of course, and man. We love it. having you. You know, we love picking your brain, you know, seeing what you guys are doing over there at Adobe's Lounge. You know, again, you know, it's always uh, a learning, you know, experience for our viewers to learn off us. You know, take our, our uh, implementation, you know, take our, our, our experience, I say, and then implement it, right? And, yes, you know, I'm hopefully it works for you. Today too, so never stop learning yeah of course learn learn one thing a day man becomes a better person <laughs> i try to learn one new thing a day yep. <laughs> right so that's awesome any other uh any other questions i don't see from any of our users so um what we're gonna do is we're gonna sign off um again you know if you're looking for any new vet uh supplements you have an order um you know code here 15 percent off with auto ship so use that and then you guys can get a percentage off of your supplements for your dogs, okay? So I thank you again, Gerald. Thank you, Keenan, for spending some time and, uh, you know, and helping our viewers out. And viewers, thank you so much for, you know, taking time out and listening to us. And we appreciate it. And you know what I'm say, Mark. I, and you know what? I'm going to take this and say, if you don't have a working breed, <laughs> go ahead, Gerald. You say it the best, man. Listen, if you don't have any working lines, you're wasting your time. Wasting your time. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be signing off. Thanks, you guys. All right. You have a good one. Take care. Bye.